Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. Sorry about the rain, but uh, in this episode, we are going to hopefully button up the roll cage on the Alfa Ferrari. All right guys, hopefully you can hear me, but um, those of you who are watching last week will have seen that I started on the cage. I'll, uh, I'll put a link up here so you can have a look and uh, catch up with where we are. And if you're enjoying these videos, please think about subscribing. It does, uh, it does help if you aren't already. So there were a few comments last week about um, what I'm doing, why I'm building a cage at all in a road car, why, I'm, uh, why am I not building a full roll cage integrated into the, into the car and all that sort of stuff. And a big reason is that um, head impacts are a real thing. There are plenty of people who get killed driving race cars on the road without a helmet and even though the structure is obviously much better, the whole car is much stronger, and if you're in a rollover, the car is much stronger, the issue is, is that they protrude out past the sort of flat body area of the car, and uh, they're much closer to your head than the regular bodywork. And as a firefighter, I've been to countless car accidents, and um, I can tell you firsthand what it's like seeing heads that have hit things that they shouldn't, and it's not good. So I am not going to run a, uh, a front cage on this car, not on the street. I'm quite happy with the rear cage. It helps towards the chassis stiffening. Sorry about this rain. And um, there's a lot more chassis stiffening I'm going to do in the future. There's, uh, there's a lot going into the reinforcing on this car, which I'll get to later once everything else is in place. I don't want to put reinforcing into places and then realize I've got to put an exhaust there or something. So um, that will be done after everything else is done. So. Next step, I suppose, is get back in there and start looking at um, putting in the rest of the cage. All right, so I've got my um, sort of support bar here, which actually isn't really doing anything anymore because now I've uh, actually tacked in this main hoop uh, onto the, so the base plates that I put in last week. So now I need to do work out what I'm going to do as far as rear bars go and where I'm going to put them. Now, have a look. Some cages in 105s, they put onto the wheel arches. I'm less of a fan of that. Um, I am more looking that I'm gonna go here, basically right in through this hole. This is where the rear suspension mount bolts in, and that sort of inner rail in the, um, uh, in the car is actually bolted in here. So this is one of the strongest parts of the rear of the car. So I am looking at this panel here, and I'm gonna run the, uh, the rear bars from the, the cage directly down to this sort of panel here. And like I mentioned last week with the, uh, the base plates, I'm gonna do a, a plate that's mounted onto the car and then a plate on the base of the cage that bolts onto that plate. The plate that is welded onto the car needs to be 60 square centimeters. So uh, let's start doing up some templates now and working out roughly where I'm gonna put it and uh, how I'm going to attach it all to the car. Alright, so you saw I made up my little cardboard template that fits into that sort of uh, that little panel in there and it's got a little, uh, a little fold in it. That's to, to wrap around the corner because um, for starters, the, the size of the, the, the main rectangle in that spot that I had would not fit entirely, um, it's not quite 60 square centimetres. And also, um, when I cut my tube, which I made a little sort of uh, template up with a piece of cardboard. When I cut it on an angle, um, you're not gonna be able to get to both of the bolts. It needs to have at least two uh, M8 bolts in it and uh, one of them I can fit down the bottom. Um, particularly with the angle, you wouldn't be able to get a bolt in above or sort of above and behind the, the tube. So wrapping it over the side makes sense. This is just over, this is about 70 square centimeters or something like that. So it's just bigger than what I need. I then folded up my pieces, cut them out with the plasma, folded up a couple of pieces. Now I'm gonna put some captive nuts on it and then we can start looking at making the mounting plates 
for the, uh, the actual cage itself. All right, the mounting plates are in the car and uh, the next thing to do is to start making up the base plates. This is for the feet of the rear bars. I just uh, used my same template. I just sort of curved the corners a little bit and uh, I'll actually round off these sharp points when I actually put it in the car. I just like having a nice, a, a slightly smoother, rounder foot of the cage when it goes into the car because that's the bit you're lifting in and out and particularly when it's trimmed, the whole thing's trimmed, just less sharp pointy bits is uh, a little bit nicer if you do accidentally touch some of the uh, interior trim. It's not gonna stab a hole in it. So uh, let's uh, get the plasma out again, cut uh, a couple of these out and see if we can bend them up and get them to fit nicely into the back of the car. I folded up my base plates. These are for the feet of the cage itself. And um, the, the main part of the, uh, the foot is gonna sit here, uh, bolt on this corner and this corner. Then now, the issue is, is that I need to try and line up the holes with the plates that I stupidly already welded in the car. I should have actually done these off the car and then I would have been able to mark the holes with my same little marker pen I used before and it would have made it easy. But I'm not that smart. So uh, now I've got to do it on the, uh, the panel and that's where I use these little transfer punches. So um, what I did is I just, it's just getting a bolt in a drill on the, uh, on the grinder and uh, I've turned it down into this little uh, transfer punch which I then can go through and screw in to my captive nuts. It does make it a little bit more difficult because it's on an angle but now I've screwed it into my captive nuts, hold my plate exactly where I want it on top of the studs and then just Give it a tap and I have my, my little marks where I want to drill my holes. I've got my base plates mounted in. Now I need to start trying to measure up my uh, back stays. So obviously one on either side, they've got to come up and join up into the roll bar and trying to measure the, uh, the face of this plate to the roll bar, I found the easiest way is to sort of uh, get a piece of rod sit it up i'm sitting at sort of the top of the rod at where the bottom of the bar was going to sit on this plate um, and then line it up with the roll bar i've got a piece of cardboard with some magnets on it and uh, i can just line up that piece of cardboard with the uh, with the magnets to get my angle just exactly the way i want it that way i've got my cardboard now in the exact angle i need i can then transpose that angle onto my tube and uh, cut it out. All right, so I did a bit of um, cutting, grinding then, and I've actually fish mouthed the end of this tube so that it will fit nicely up onto this bar. Now, it's a bit of playing backwards and forwards to try and get this uh, right. And I don't actually have a tube notcher. Uh, so this was all done by hand. Um, I'll show you, take you through the method I do this. I was actually planning on getting myself a tube notcher finally for this cage, because this, this is the third cage I've done. But uh, I hadn't got it yet. But I wasn't actually planning on doing the cage this early because I'm still waiting on deliveries for a bunch of other things that I want to get done. So uh, I had to move forward and do this. So now I've done the, uh, the notching. It actually fits in here quite nicely. It's probably, yeah, that's probably not a very good camera angle. It's a nice fit now. So I'll take you through and show you how I did it on the one for the other side.
Okay, so cutting the end of this tube to match up with my angle, I showed you that already, that was pretty easy. But where I join up to this roll bar, that is where it starts getting more difficult. So what I did is uh, I've measured uh, my mark from where I bent the tube from the other side and uh, matched it up to where I mounted up the opposite side tube. Now, this is where it starts getting harder, is how do you cut a piece of uh, tube to match this curve? Because this is much more difficult than most others because it's, uh, uh, it's curving, it's on an angle, it's coming in on a weird angle. Basically what I do is I, I put the, uh, the base of the tube where I want it and, uh, and hold it there with my foot. And then I sit my tube roughly where I want it and I mark a line which is uh, perfectly opposite to where the tube actually touches the roll bar. And then I mark um, either side in line with basically with this, uh, the, where the tube crosses over. And then I put a mark, a third of the diameter of the tube up, and then I put a mark across one way and the other way. And that is the angles that I cut um, my tube at. And then when I hit it with the flat disc, I should be able to actually uh, fish mouth it to get it so it cups on really nicely onto this tube. So uh, let's cut that now and see how neat it actually comes out. Okay, so just with those square cuts, you can see that uh, the angle of my machine, I couldn't get all the way down to this corner. But straight away, you can see that it is not a terrible fit. So obviously I want it to sit here, and when I trim it down uh, and uh, start fish mouthing it a bit more with the flat disc on the grinder, I'll get it to sit um, a bit deeper and uh, it should tuck in and clip in really nicely. But that is such a good start. And with a bit of uh, grinding, you can see that's a nice fish mouth and it clips on beautifully onto this uh, main hoop and lines up with my back stay. So it's a bit of backwards and forwards and it's very easy to go too far. So it only take a little bit off at a time because if you go too far, start again. And I don't have enough tube for that, so I really can't make a mistake. Um, this is looking really good, so I think it's time to tack up my rear bars. All right, so we have two rear bars in, and they look really good. They look really symmetrical. So uh, and the next thing to do is to put in the diagonal brace. All right, I thought I'd come over here and show you in the back of Harry. So this is the cage I built in the back of Harry, and I really went overboard on this, this cage, and I regret it now because basically I can not really fit anything into the back of the car. I can't get to the back seats because it has all these cross braces, it has the harness bar and the, uh, and the diagonals all really close to the back of the back seat. Now, Schedule J means that I need to fit a diagonal from, from the corner of the main hoop all the way up to the, uh, the top of the main hoop uh, above the driver's head. You have to have at least one, and uh, I could either have it as the uh, joint on the main hoop, or I can have it like this one here on the back of the back stays. And that's what I'm gonna do on the Alpha, because I don't need all of this mess. It, uh, it sort of looks good, but it's really not very practical. And, uh, and on this car, I'm hoping to be a little bit more practical. So for the diagonal bar, the driver's side, this is a uh, right-hand drive car, so this is the driver's side over here on the right-hand side. And I'm gonna put the diagonal brace from the bottom of this left-hand backstay up to the top of the right-hand backstay here. The things I need to just consider is, obviously there's a bolting point for this uh, rear backstay, and uh, I need to be able to get it bolted and unbolted, so that's something I need to consider. 
but uh, because this bolting point is sort of on an angle around the side, it actually gives me a bit more access, which is pretty good, so I can have it pretty low down on here. And I'm gonna tuck it up as high up on this side as I can. So now I need to get out my measurements and see if I can measure a tube about the right size and start notching it and getting it to fit. All right, that is a beautiful fit. Clips in there beautifully. So now all I just gonna do, clean up the ends and tack the crossbar in. We're really, uh, we're really moving on this cage. All right, I am, uh, I'm quite happy. The, uh, the crossbar is in, that went in pretty quickly and easily. So the last thing I'm gonna do on this cage, I'm not going to town. This is just a, uh, a, a cage to help stiffen up the chassis for the road and give me a little bit of added safety, um, is to add a harness bar. So if I do take it on the track, I can put a harness on. Uh, the, um, I'm just looking at it now. I've, I'm sitting in the seat and looking at my shoulder line and my shoulders are just slightly above the, uh, the sort of the water line of the car. The harness needs to be uh, level or slightly below your shoulders. Slightly below is better. So I'm gonna uh, have a look and go from the, uh, the water line of the car, from the window line, and, uh, and I can put my harness bar in there. So let's start measuring up where I need to put the harness bar. So I spent a lot of time here getting that harness bar perfectly in line and level and straight. So you can look at it at every angle and it's nice and square. Now I need to get back in the car, tack it up, and then I can do the finish welding on the entire cage. And we have the cage and it's all welded up. And I am absolutely in love with the TIG. Uh, it, just, it just welds so nicely. Um, it really just, the welds flow. It's really quite simple to do a nice even weld without adding too much material, which is what I find with the MIG. Every time I use the MIG, particularly on sort of big stuff like this, it tends to make, add just too much material. Even turning the wire speed right down, it still sort of makes the welds too big. Whereas this, you just add as you need and it just flows so nicely. So I'm a fan, but uh, now it's time to try and fit it back in the car and hopefully it hasn't warped all out of place and it bolts in. All right, well, uh, now I've got the cage back in, and of course, uh, because of the welding, it has uh, it has shrunk and moved a bit. The heat on the sides has pulled these, uh, these sides in, which is pretty common. I probably should have done more work on it, um, bolted in the car, so it couldn't move as much, but um, I think I can sort of rectify those issues and fix it up. But I think I'm gonna to have to do that next week because I am just out of time. So uh, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff.
Hey guys, in 1924, Enzo Ferrari had his most successful year yet as a racing car driver, winning at Ravina, Policini and Coppo Asalbo. By 1925, he's beginning to lose his nerve, understandably, after the death of two of his close racing car driver friends, Ugo Savocci and Antonio Ascari. Up to that time, he was driving smaller races and second-hand cars, but his success saw him get promoted by Alfa Romeo to become a full factory driver. He was set to drive in the French Grand Prix, biggest race of his career yet, set to hit the big time, but it's believed his nerves got the better of him and he was unable to compete in the race. However, in true Enzo Ferrari style, he did manage to bounce back from this and made himself invaluable to the Alfa Romeo racing department. By 1929, he started his own race team within Alfa Romeo called Scuderia Ferrari. Scuderia, for those of you who don't know, means stables. See the horse connection. All right, guys, well, um, that is it for another week, and I am mostly happy with the cage. It would be nice if it actually fit back in the car. Um, I have some ideas about fixing it up. It's not out by that much, but it's still out, and it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's too hard to get it back in again. But I will tackle that next week. Um, What's the saying? Measure once, no, measure. Measure once, measure twice, cut once. No, yeah, something like that. It's kind of like a stitch in nine. No, oh yeah. gosh, a stitch in time saves nine. It, it, For it, the want of a nail, the war was lost. Yeah. I've got lots of these. It, it did fit before I welded it, but then after I welded it, it just goes. You should have got someone who's really good at welding like me to do it. Those of you who haven't seen my old yes. welding videos, they're really something quite yes. special. <laughs> um, in, uh, in any case, um, if you're enjoying these, please uh, join us on Patreon and uh, get to watch the videos a day early, ad-free. And uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. Yeah, join us on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. See you soon. Bye. See ya. Get imprisoned. Oh, it's echoes. Hey guys, I feel like this is bizarre. <laughs> it's been a long day. But his success for saw um What? Ooh. What? But a success saw Alpha Ferrari. I was about to say Alpha Ferrero. Mm -hmm.